So I recently posted these two motion graphic edits and the user vampmk, I hope I pronounced you right, asked me if I could make a tutorial. And of course I can make that. So we will make this section of one of my motion graphic edits. And by the way, this editing style is inspired by Kyozer. So make sure to follow him. Anyway, let's get into the tutorial. First of all, let's talk about the composition settings. For the width and the height, we will use 1080 by 1080 and change the FPS to 23. By the way, our scene is 2 seconds long if you want to change the duration as well. By the way, you can find all of the assets in the video description if you want to do the same edit as me. Alright, let's get started. Search for the background, this one, and put it into the timeline. Then mark it and scale it up until you like it. I scaled mine to 355. Then search for the house wall and put it to the left. I ended up with the settings 241, 540. Now search for the Spider-Man and put him to the left so he's on the wall. Now search for Iron Man and put him into the timeline. Press P on your keyboard and put him to the right. I ended up with the settings 1550, 540. Then put Natasha into the timeline and adjust the position. I ended up with 563, 599. Now mark all of the pictures and put motion blur and the 3D symbol on. So now this is a little complicated, but basically we will change the position of each picture in the 3D space. The most important number is the last one. It basically works like scale. To make this a little bit easier, we will change the view to two views and change the view to custom view one. And now as you can see, when we will change the last number of position to the negative, our character goes forward. You can also click on the blue arrow to change the position setting. Don't worry, I will give you every single setting of the pictures, but I just wanted that you understand the concept of it. Alright, once you finish that, you can change the two view to one view. And now we will create a text. Search for the rectangle shape layer, hold the left mouse button and click on rounded rectangle. Now make a rectangle shape and change the color to something yellowish. Now right click, transform and center the anchor point. Copy the shape layer three more times with Ctrl plus D and adjust the position. Search for the T symbol and type the first word which is back and change the color of the text to red. By the way, I used the font 7 moon, if you want to use the same font as me. Then I also centered the anchor point and do this process now 3 more times. Once you finish that, we need to adjust the shapes, cause for some of the words there's way too much space or the word is too big. Don't worry, there's an easy way to do this. Click on the first shape layer and search for the anchor point tool and put the anchor point to the left of the shape. Press V so you have the normal selecting tool again and now you can change the size by dragging the shape to the left. Do this now with all of the other shapes. Once you finish that, we will add a little animation to it as well. Go to your first shape layer, press P, keyframe it and put the keyframe a little bit to the right. Then put the shape layer a little bit to the left. Press T on your keyboard so opacity opens and keyframe it. Go to the beginning and change the value to 0. Mark all of the keyframes and easy ease them. Just press F9 for that. Go to the graph editor, we will use the speed graph and copy my graph. Now do this with all of the other shape layers as well. After that I match the text to the song as you can see and now I will add a little text animation. The preset for it will be in the description and just put it onto your text. I also link the text with the shape layer so it also has the position animation. To do this search for this Naruto R symbol and link the word back with the first shape layer and do this with all of the other ones. Make sure though to only link it when the animation is fully done or else it will glitch for some reason. And then also put motion blur and the 3D symbol on. Finally we can start with the 3D animation. Go to layer new and create a camera. We will use the default settings so press ok. Then go to layer again and create Create a null object. We're gonna change the color of the null object so it's easier to recognize. I changed it to yellow and then copy it by pressing Ctrl plus D three more times so we have four null objects. This is optional but I also rename my null objects. Lastly put motion blur and the 3D symbol on. 
All right, so why are we doing this? Basically, the null objects allow us to do multiple animation at once, which will give us a smooth movement. To make this a little bit easier for you to understand, I will give you a basic rule I do all the time while making motion graphic edits. The first and the last null object will always be your zoom in or zoom out. The other ones in between are null objects we will use for the movement and those are always mid graphs. Alright, let's make our animation. Put motion tile on the background and copy my settings. The first thing you will do is linking the camera with the first null object. Now press P on your keyboard so position opens and keyframe it. And then press R and keyframe Z rotation. Now press U and put those two keyframes a little bit to the right. In my case it was 15 frames. Go to the beginning and change the last position number to the positive so you will basically zoom in. I ended up with 777 and changed the Z rotation to 17. Now mark all of the keyframes, easy ease them by pressing F9, go to the graph editor and copy my graph. So the first animation is done. For our second animation we want to zoom in to our text in the top right. To do this first of all link the first null object with the second null object. Go to the second null object and press P. By the way keep in mind that the second animation needs to start before the first one ends. Then press R as well and keyframe Z rotation. Then go a few frames to the right I ended up by 19 seconds and change the position so our text is centered. I ended up with the settings 821, 377 and 326 for position and plus 4 for the Z rotation. Then easy ease all of the keyframes, go to the graph editor and we will use a mid curve for that one. So copy me. So now it looks something like this. Then go to the Spider-Man, press T, keyframe it and put it a few frames to the right. Go to the beginning and change it to 0 so the Spider-Man fades in. Go to the third null object, make sure to start your third animation before the second animation ends. Also make sure to turn off the eye symbol of Black Widow cause she's a little bit annoying right now. We will turn it on later. By the way, don't forget to link the second null object with the third one. Then go a few frames to the right and zoom out by changing the third number of position. I ended up with the following values. We will change the graphs later by the way. Go to Iron Man, press P and keyframe it and move it to the end of the second animation. Then go to the end of the third animation and change the position of the Iron Man so it is in the middle of the composition. I change the position to the following. Then press R and keyframe Z rotation. Then go to the left and change the value to 7. After that press T so opacity opens and put it a few frames to the right. Go to the beginning and change the value to 0. Mark all of the keyframes, easy ease them and go to the graph editor and copy my graph. Then create a marker at 1.20 seconds cause there's our first beat. Then mark all of the keyframes and copy my graph. Then go back to the third null object and mark all of the keyframes. Then easy ease all of the keyframes and do this graph for every single value. So basically you do this graph for position, x, y and z rotation. Now link the third null layer with the fourth one. Then press P and keyframe it and also R and keyframe x, y and z rotation. Move the cursor a few frames to the right and zoom out once again until you see Black Widow. Keep in mind that you need to turn on the eye symbol again. I ended up with the following values. Mark all of them, easy ease them and copy my graph. Now we will add an animation to Black Widow. Press P and move it a few frames to the right and then change the second value. I changed mine to 1944. Then press T so opacity opens, keyframe it and move it to the right. Go to the left and change the value to 0. Easy ease all of the keyframes and copy my graph. 
we need to add one more null object for the last zoom out animation. Go to layer new and create another null object. I also change the color to yellow. Link the fourth null object with the fifth one and put motion blur and the 3D symbol on. Press R and keyframe Z rotation and then press P and keyframe this as well. Press U and go to the end. Zoom in. My value is 814 by the way. And change the Z rotation to minus 17. Now put the keyframes to the end, mark all of them, easy ease them. Go to the graph editor and copy my graph. Now the animation looks something like this. Looks pretty cool already. We will make the fade out animation of the text now. So pre-compose all of the shape layers and text together. Make sure to put on the 3D symbol and the motion blur. Go to the middle of the second null object animation, press P and keyframe it. Then go a few frames to the right until Iron Man is almost in the middle and put the text to the right just like that. Then go to the beginning and keyframe opacity. Go to the right and change the value to 0. Easy ease all of the keyframes and copy my graph. Then I put the keyframe a little bit to the left cause the animation looks better like that. Now we will fix the background cause it looks pretty ugly to be honest. Look where the animation of the Iron Man starts and keyframe scale there. Go to the end and change the value to 800. Easy ease the keyframes and copy my graph. Now we will add some flashes to make it look cooler. Go to layer, new and create an adjustment layer. Cut it and search for brightness and contrast. Keyframe it and change the value to 70. Go 10 frames to the right and change it to 0. Search the BCC lens blur and put it onto the adjustment layer. Change the iris scale to 10 and keyframe it. Go to the end and change it to 0. Easy ease those two keyframes. Go to the graph editor and copy my graph. Now you can copy the adjustment layer by pressing Ctrl plus D and put them where a beat hits. As you can see I also created another adjustment layer which is under Natasha to create a blurry background. Just put Gaussian blur to the adjustment layer, keyframe it, go a few frames to the right and change the value to 20. Lastly we will add a coloring, so create another adjustment layer. Search for unsharp mask and put it onto the adjustment layer. Change the amount to 18 and play around with the radius. I changed mine to 140. Then search for sharpen and put it onto your adjustment layer and change the value to 35. Then search for S flicker and change the amplitude to 0.1. Furthermore, search for noise. Change the amount to 6 and finally I like to add a S glow. Change the color to an orange. And change the amount to 0.6 and you are done. Congrats! You just finished a really advanced animation. I hope this tutorial helped you. By the way, 91.7% aren't subscribed yet. So if this tutorial helped you, make sure to subscribe. But just if you want to. Anyway, bye bye.